did his very best to keep in touch uh, with everyone, whether it was here at home and of course uh, in his time in England, where he uh, spent 61 years of his life and yet not losing touch uh, with uh, his home place, home parish, parish of Lura and Cabin here, and the many people that uh, uh, that he was still kept great familiarity with. And I can uh, acknowledge that from my own mother, who was always so fond of that, and always, he always asked him, uh, he was always asking after her, as, uh, as he did, I'm sure, after uh, so many, so many, many people. So we welcome to those who are going to join us in this Mass through uh, the video that they will watch the recording of this Mass. So we are very welcome and uh, we join with you as part of Pat's community. We know you had your own prayers for him before Pat uh, left England to come over here to the cabin for his burial. So we welcome you to join in the uh, prayers that we are uh, offering again on his behalf today. For all family members, we ask God to console you at this time. We all need consolation in the moment of a loved one's death. So to Noreen and Maura and Mike and Margaret and Carmen, to all of you, family and friends, we just ask Almighty God to reassure you as we all ask God to reassure us of the day we shall meet again, that death in itself is only a change from one step, one form of life to the next. And we pray that we keep that in mind. So we're not looking at someone that's been dead, we're looking at them as having changed uh, from one life to another. Someone said, reading something recently, uh, where is heaven? And someone said, the room next door. So like, you know, someone is not very, we're not very far away. So to all of you and all of us as a community, as we gather together, we, uh, we pray for Pat, and as I say, we join with the many people that um, have always uh, known Pat and the community that uh, he shared with so much in England. Pat left us uh, here at 18, like some of the rest of us, and uh, went to England, spent many years working in the uh, Midland Bank, <coughs> was very much involved in his own parish community, Eucharistic minister, uh, a person who uh, uh, always visited the sick and uh, had great care. So the Lord, we say, Lord, reward him for every single uh, good that he has done, as indeed we know he will. And as someone said yesterday, only about that, he was a gentleman. And that he was. And we can recognize and acknowledge that. And he never lost that wonder and that dignity of who he was. And had his own suffering towards the end of his life, but we say, Lord, let that be part of his own prayer, and let that be a part of, of his presence with you uh, in, in eternity. So let us all prepare ourselves for this Mass by acknowledging our sins and to asking God to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have faithfully sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have given to you, through my fault, through my fault, through my misery and so on. Therefore I ask for the celebrity of the Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. Christ have mercy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our mighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant through this mystery your servant Pat, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
The first reading, the reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil that is covering all peoples and the shroud in wrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our Lord, in God and whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hope. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Yes.
with you. <laughs> reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <laughs> Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you for preparing the liturgy for a past funeral, because again, when you pick readings, it reflects your thoughts and it reflects the, the faith too that, uh, that we profess as we gather to celebrate uh, a funeral mass. I love that second reading, that letter of St. John. Think of the love that the, fa think of the, love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. Greatest blessing we can ever have is to be called children of God, to live in the way that the Lord could say to us when uh, he sees us coming to meet him at the end of our earthly life, that you're welcome with those words that we hear in scripture, well done, good and faithful servant, come and inherit what was promised and prepared uh, since the foundation of the world. It's not just even since we were born or based on anything we said or done. It is the efforts really that we have put into living as the Lord invites us to. With all of our failures and our times we fall down, the Lord looks not so much at the failures as the efforts we get, we make to get up again and to continue in that way that we're not overcome by our failures, not overcome by sickness, not overcome by anything that would blind us in any way to who the Lord is and the promise that uh, he, has, he has made for us. My dear people, says uh, St. John, we are already the children of God. What we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed, certainly not fully revealed. But the Lord himself did reveal and tell us uh, about what to expect uh, in eternal life at the end of this earthly one and the beginning of the new life that the Lord has for us. When it is revealed, it says, then uh, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he really is. How easy for us to skip over those words and not to allow them to come deep down into our hearts because as we let them sink into our spirit, and uh, what are we doing? We're, we're uh, strengthening our faith, we're acknowledging before God that we really accept his word and that we really look forward uh, to what it is uh, that the Lord has promised and that we trust him because of course we are, we set out on any journey and uh, most of us, you know, set out on a journey, we have to have our maps and we have to have all kinds of maybe instructions or our Google directions and whatever it is, we always never like to set out on a journey, I'm sure, on an unknown journey, without knowing exactly uh, the, the, the road, the, the way to go. And yet, for eternal life, the Lord is asking us uh, in that way to really um, uh, trust, trust in Him, trust in the way, trust that He Himself, having gone before us, uh, prepares the way, as he said to his disciples, as we hear in that gospel passage. And Jesus acknowledged that we would grieve over the loss of a loved one. Of course he does, because he acknowledges our humanity. He acknowledges everything about us and the way we feel and what's in our hearts. 
Do not let your heart, he says, be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. Yes, he was preparing his apostles uh, for his own departure from them. And he says, I'm only going ahead to prepare a place for you. And that we say to Almighty God, uh, those who have gone before us, uh, in their presence we hope they too are assisting us upon that journey uh, into eternal life as we remember them. But the Lord above all else and the saints and those that we were so fond of upon earth are part of the welcoming committee that please God we will meet uh, on our way as we head towards the Lord. Wonderful message there. There are many rooms in my father's house and if there were not, I myself would have told you. I should have told you. And the Lord will always tell us the truth. And that is what he says to us. The truth is that he is the way. He is the, I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the way to that eternal life. Every word I speak is truth. And, uh, and, and, you, and, and the life that I promise, I can promise it to you because I know it exactly as he says uh, from the Father in heaven that this is what God's plan is for everyone. So for Pat on this day, as we thank God for his life, thank God for the goodness that he had and the way he shared it with uh, those that he came in contact with, once again his own community that he spent so many years in, and to the many people that he came uh, in contact with, either through his work or through, as uh, Marla was saying, his rambling club that he was so fond of, that's companionship and communion with one another. And it's a foretaste of communion with uh, eternal life. So to each and to everyone, we say, Lord, uh, we thank you for Pat's, uh, the, what, what you've discovered is his love as a, a reflection of God's love for all of us. And use it in that way. Use it as a reflection of God's love. And we say, one day, Lord, may we all end up in that eternal life that you have prepared for every single one. Because around that banquet, that eternal banquet, as we often hear heaven described as, there is a place set for every single one. We go to a wedding and you find a uh, kind of table set out, don't you, with uh, a place, you know, and say, what table am I at or wherever it is? And we're looking for names and table numbers and all kinds of things. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a, an image, a, a very earthly image of eternal life of that eternal banquet when the Lord has prepared a place for everyone and the thing is we won't worry about who we're sitting with we'll be one and all by that grace and the one of God so we thank God for that we thank the Lord that he had his faith in him and that we too have uh, continued that faith and we let a promise to pray for him as we do not just today uh, but uh, we always make that promise uh, uh, coming to a funeral mass and especially for our families that we would remember them. And a little a phrase that was always on the memorial cards, if you remember them going back, St. Ambrose, uh, we love them in life, let us not forget them in death. And that's what we do. And we say thank you, Lord, uh, for each and for everyone. So we're asking now again in our prayers of the faithful that we lift up all our intentions to Almighty God, asking Him to accept them as we have our prayers.
sent into one mighty God on our behalf, as we say, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Pat, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Saviour may find him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hands. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, our hosts, heaven and earth are for your glory, for the Son and the Christ, and this is in the name of the Lord, and the Son. Rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit. Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this so that you will drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We pray that this mingling of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ will bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the suffer of the Lamb. Lord, I am the Lord, 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 the the body of Christ and the blood of Christ keep us all safe for everlasting life. Communion, we will come down uh, among the benches of the brothers. Blessed, blessed. 
body of Christ. Body of Christ.
and for everyone to gather in prayer and lift up that prayer to Almighty God. So we have our uh, final prayers. Before we go our separate ways and take leave of our brother Pat, may our farewell express our affection for him. May these our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to greet him, angels of the
Jesus Christ. By your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that Pat may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendour of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Because God has chosen the called path from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth. The Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. We commend him to the Lord that he may embrace him in his peace and raise up his body on the last day. In reverence, let us pray to God again, for who is the source of all mercies. You raise the dead to life. Give life to Pat forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to those who mourn for Pat this day and dry the tears of all who weep. Lord, hear us. Comfort us in our sorrow. Let faith be our consolation, eternal life our hope. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are buried in this cemetery. May their suffering be lessened, their joy increased. May the light of glory shine on them, that they may rest in peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. We ask again God's blessing upon ourselves and upon all who pray this day and all who ever have known Pat. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who call out to you in their need. Strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the prayers of Mary, the mother of God, who stood by the cross of her son as he was dying, help those who mourn for Pat and accompany all of us in our time of need. <coughs> Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him, that he may rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. 
upon Pat and upon all who have gone before us and upon yourselves, that blessing of Almighty God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in the love and the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.